Last year's Galaxy Note 7 was perhaps the most famous Samsung smartphone in history, for all the wrong reasons. The company kicked off its recovery with the excellent Galaxy S8 earlier this year, and now it hopes to complete the comeback with the mobile world's biggest do-over. I'm Mr. Mobile, and I spent an afternoon with the new Galaxy Note 8. This is a first look, brought to you by dbrand. If you expected a big shift in strategy this year, you won't find it on the Note 8. It's ever so slightly bigger than its sibling, the Galaxy S8 Plus, with the tighter radius corners on its 6.3-inch display giving it a more boxy silhouette. That display is the biggest in the current Galaxy smartphone family by just a hair, and thanks to the stretched aspect ratio, it's still manageable with one hand. Kinda. Samsung talked a lot about user habits during the Note 8 brief. The company's data tells it that Galaxy S8 Plus owners spend 40 more minutes per day on their phones than owners of the smaller S8, and it also says that Galaxy Note owners are 40% more likely to multitask on their phones. So the display hardware is very likely the best Samsung has ever put in a phone. Quad HD Plus, Super AMOLED, Infinity Edges, all accounted for. And the software now lets you jump right into split-screen multitasking with a two-for-one app shortcut, which you needed a third-party app to accomplish until now. Naturally, none of this matters if your phone falls asleep before you do. And here's my first concern. The battery in the Galaxy Note 8 clocks in at 3,300 milliamp hours. Now, that's 5% smaller than the power pack on the Note 7, which I found to be barely enough to get me through a day during the brief time I had it. Now, the Note 8 should see some added power efficiency thanks to its newer Snapdragon 835 processor, at least here in the States, and the Note 8 also carries the added bonus of probably not blowing up in your face. Samsung went to the trouble of securing UL safety certification this time around, and every battery it ships is also subjected to the company's new 8-point safety check. So I'm not concerned about this phone becoming a danger to consumers, but I am dismayed at the capacity reduction. I'm old enough to remember a time when the Note was the king of every major specification. And in my view, there's no more important spec than battery capacity. So why not just buy an S8 Plus and be done with it? Three reasons. First, don't forget about the S Pen, stowed away in its special silo in the lower right. While there are other phones with styluses, none of them even come close to the capabilities of this one. There's always some new ridiculousness on the software side. This year, it's animated handwriting that you can send as a GIF GIF. But for me, the S Pen is most useful as a surrogate mouse for tapping tiny touch targets. And in a noteworthy feat of engineering, the pen and the phone are IP68 dust and water resistant, whether the pen is stowed or deployed. The other two reasons the Note stands apart from the S8 Plus are located side by side on the backplate. This is the first Samsung phone to ship with dual primary cameras, and it's the first phone anywhere that I know of to include honest-to-goodness optical stabilization on both of them. That means those long-distance shots you take with the telephoto lens are less likely to look like they came from Mr. Blurry Cam. And the added depth information that comes from using two cameras makes it possible to do that portrait shooting that everyone's crazy for these days. Personally, I wish Samsung had gone the LG route and included a super wide angle for the secondary camera instead of the telephoto, but the company is very clearly targeting Apple consumers with the Note 8, and there's no denying that the iPhone 7 Plus portrait mode has scored Apple a lot of buzz. I'll be interested to see how this dual camera system fares in the real world during my review. That review period will also give me the chance to answer some questions my brief hands-on could not. In particular, I'm eager to see whether the software suffers from the periodic sluggishness most Samsung phones exhibit relative to competitors like the Pixel. I'm excited to see if the 6 gigs of RAM help out when the phone is plugged into its DeX dock and acting as a desktop computer stand-in. And I'm interested to see if I can ever train myself to avoid hitting the Bixby button when I'm just trying to turn down the volume. Yep, Samsung is still trying to make its own digital assistant happen. But given everything I've seen so far, I don't exactly have high hopes. The Note 8 is available for pre-order August 24, with shipments beginning September 15th. Pricing wasn't yet public when this video hit the upload queue, so I'll drop the deets in the comments when they go official. You can expect it to be expensive, though. 
And if you live in the US, you won't be getting the fancy maple gold or deep sea blue color options. Not yet. That means fingerprints galore on the midnight black, and to a lesser extent the orchid gray models. And speaking of, that fingerprint sensor is still terribly placed off-center on the back. If you don't want to keep smudging up your camera by accident, you'll want to stick to retina scanning. Or give your finger some extra guidance with a premium vinyl skin from dbrand, who've made this video possible. Whether you're looking to save your Note 8 from a serious smudge fest or help your fingers find that fingerprint sensor, dbrand can help with the best skins in the business that also help your phone stand out. Hit up the link in the description and let me know what questions you want answered in the full Galaxy Note 8 review. Drop a comment or ping me on Twitter or Facebook at the Mr. Mobile. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.